Welcome to Scleroderma Interstitial Lung Disease, a whiteboard presentation brought to you by Scleroderma Canada. Hello, my name is Alicia. Today I'm going to talk to you about Scleroderma Interstitial Lung Disease. But first, let's start at the beginning. What is Scleroderma? Scleroderma is a rare chronic multi-symptom autoimmune disease. Literally, the word scleroderma means hardening of the skin. It is estimated that approximately one in every 2,500 person in North America and Europe is affected by scleroderma. Although researchers don't know exactly what causes scleroderma, we do know that it is not contagious, not infectious, and not cancerous. We also know that although genes play a role in scleroderma, it can't be inherited from your parents or passed on directly to your children. Typically women between the ages of 25 to 50 are four times more likely to get scleroderma than men. Scleroderma also occurs in men and children from infants to the elderly. and it affects people of all races and ethnicities around the world. Scleroderma is also known as a type of disease that affects the connective tissue. Connective tissue provides strength and support to structures in the body, such as skin, blood vessels, and internal organs. It is made up of cells called fibroblasts and protein fibers of collagen and elastin. Normally, collagen makes tissue soft and it helps heal injuries to the body's tissue when it gets damaged. But in a person with scleroderma, the fibroblasts become activated due to an autoimmune response which results excess collagen production. In a healthy person, the immune system guards against foreign invaders, things like toxins, bacterial cells, and viruses by sending out attack cells, things like red and white blood cells and antibodies to kill them. Normally, the immune system can tell the difference between foreign cells and a person's own cells. But when a person has an autoimmune disease, the immune system attacks healthy cells in a person's body by mistake. In scleroderma, cells start making collagen as if there were an injury that needs repairing. The cells do not turn off as they should and end up making too much collagen. The extra collagen in the tissue can prevent the body's organs from functioning normally. In some forms of scleroderma, the localized form, patches of hard, tight skin are the extent of this irregular collagen overproduction process. This form of scleroderma does not affect the major organs. Typically, it develops in children and it has a much better long-term prognosis. In other forms of scleroderma, the systemic form called systemic sclerosis, the problem goes much deeper, as well as the skin. This form of scleroderma affects the underlying tissues, blood vessels, and internal organs such as the heart, lungs, kidneys, and digestive tract. When the overproduction of collagen starts to affect the lungs, it is called interstitial lung disease or pulmonary interstitial fibrosis. When people breathe, oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged from the blood through the alveoli. The alveoli are tiny balloon-shaped air sacs arranged in clusters at the very end of the bronchioles or respiratory tree in the lungs. When interstitial disease is present, the lung becomes inflamed and stiff, limiting the alveoli from fully expanding. This restricts both the delivery of oxygen to the bloodstream and the removal of carbon dioxide from the body. As the disease progresses, the interstitium in the walls of the alveoli thickens and scars, which further hinders lung function. 
The scarring causes stiffness in the lungs, which makes it difficult to breathe. Symptoms of ILD usually develop gradually. Symptoms may include shortness of breath, especially during or after physical activity, dry cough, can be chronic dry, hacking, coughing, chronic fatigue or casting tiredness, clubbing of the fingertips, the tips of the fingers enlarged and the nails curve around the fingertips. Diagnosis of ILD can be difficult. The symptoms are similar to those of other diseases such as asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and congestive heart failure. The risk of developing ILD is greatest early in the course of systemic sclerosis, so doctors will invite you to have regular screening assessments to ensure early detection and to monitor for disease progression. To confirm the diagnosis of ILD, doctors may order one or more of the following tests. Blood tests including test of autoantibodies, pulmonary function test to measure breathing capacity, x-ray and CT scan of your chest to identify the pattern of scarring in your lungs, lung cell sample by passing a small flexible telescope down the breathing tubes in order to examine cells and look for signs of inflammation, lung biopsy. Sometimes during examination of the lungs with a stethoscope, a doctor may hear crackling sounds in the chest. These crackles have a very characteristic sound. While currently the lung scarring that occurs in interstitial lung disease can't be reversed and there is no medication that cures ILD, there are treatment options that may improve symptoms or slow the disease's progress. Others help improve quality of life. Many people diagnosed with ILD are initially treated with a corticosteroid, sometimes in combination with other drugs that suppress the immune system. Some medications have been proven to slow the rate of disease progression. Other types of treatments that help make breathing easier may include oxygen therapy, when you sleep, exercise, or even round the clock. or pulmonary rehabilitation that focuses on breathing techniques that improve lung efficiency. In severe cases of ILD where patients have not benefited from other treatments, a lung transplantation may be an option of last resort. Because the symptoms of scleroderma and scleroderma interstitial lung disease vary greatly from individual to individual, all treatment decisions made by you and your doctors need to be made on a case-by-case -case basis. Thanks to scleroderma researchers in Canada and around the world, we are learning more about the mechanisms involved in scleroderma and scleroderma interstitial lung disease. With continued support for scleroderma biomedical research, further progress can be made for treatment options that help give people with scleroderma and scleroderma interstitial lung disease their lives back. To learn more about scleroderma and scleroderma interstitial lung disease, including ways you can help improve the lives of people living with scleroderma, please contact Scleroderma Canada at 1-866-279-0632 or visit scleroderma.ca.